On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express warm welcome to all participants to this meeting. I remember that the first International Congress Conference on Differentiation Therapy was held in 1985, organized and presided by Professor Samuel Waxman and Giovanni Rossi in Sardinia, Italy. Correct? At that time, I had the honor to be invited. So more than 25 years has passed. Many progress in basic research has been achieved. Now we are at the 13th conference. The success of differentiation therapy in the treatment of acute pulmonary leukemia and advances in basic research has enlightened a new concept of cancer therapy, molecular target basis, and differential therapy in cancer. It is the theme of this meeting. I feel gratified that more and more researchers, particularly young generation, has joined this field and made outstanding contributions. I sincerely wish 13th International Conference on Cancer Differentiation Therapy, a good success. Now, I would like to introduce our first keynote speakers. Everyone know Professor Chen, Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen has his doctor degree at the University of Paris 7 in 1989 and he is a member of Chinese Academy of Sciences, Foreign Associate of National Academy of Sciences and the Institute of Medicine of the United States, Foreign Associate of French Academy of Sciences, Director of Chinese Human Genome Center at Shanghai, Honorary Director of Shanghai Institute of Hematology, and the Director of Shanghai Cancer for System Biology at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. From 2000 to, to uh, 2000 to 2007, he served the Vice President of Chinese Academy of Sciences. From 2003 to 2009, he was the co-chair of the Interim Academy panel since 2007, he is the Minister of Health of the People's Republic of China. Dr. Chen is devoted to translational research on leukemias and has also been playing a major role in genomic research in China. Currently, he is leading a major health care reform in China. Dr. Chen has published more than 180 papers on high international level journals with over 18,000 citations. Owing to his outstanding work, he has received numerous national and international awards and honors. For example, Prix de los Luas by the National League Against the Cancer of France, Prix étranger de l'INSEM of France, St. George Prize for Progress in Cancer Research by the National Foundation for Cancer Research of the United States, and Officier de l'Honneur National de la Légion d'Honneur excuse me, I pronounce it in French because it is a special honor for him by French government. Now let us warmly welcome Dr. Chen to give us the keynote speech. Thank you. 
ิสาอะไรประมาณนี้ไว้ด้วยกันดูตรงไหนไหนเข้าใจ Thank you so much, Professor c h e n g Yiwang, our respected mentor. Uh, actually, we are proud of Professor Wang because he's not only an outstanding hematologist but also a great scientist, and he has also been involved in policy making. Uh, when he was president of Shanghai Second Medical University, uh, however, according to the rules of uh, Uh, Coast Spring Harbor, Asia. There's no Minister of Health here. There are only scientists here. Uh, because uh, Suzhou is a very ancient city, uh, let me, on behalf of the organizers, uh, once again welcome you all to this. Uh, uh, Ancient city of over 2,500 years, and in China, the concept of uh, differentiation cancer therapy was inspired from uh, two perspectives. One is the Chinese philosophy. Actually, uh, this is the image of Confucius. I'm not sure if he visited Suzhou or not. Uh, however, he was so important in the history of China and even in the world history as a philosopher. Uh, of course, he was not a doctor. However, he could be considered as a doctor of a society. Okay. He said, if you use laws to direct people and punishments, To control them, they will merely try to evade the laws and will have no sense of shame. But by virtue, you guide them, and by the rights you control them, there will be a sense of shame and of right. If the human body can be considered as kind of society, then some so-called bad cells, such as cancer cells, uh, how can we deal with them? Uh, when I was a young master degree student of Professor Wang, we discussed about this. Maybe instead of just killing the cells by using cytotoxic agents, there could be alternative ways to treat cancers, such as the education. And about uh, at the beginning. Or actually, late 1970s and the beginning of 1980s, uh, the modern science also suggested that differentiation of malignant cells is possible, as demonstrated by scientists from both uh, United States, Europe, and Israel. Therefore. Under the leadership of Professor Wang, Shanghai Institute of Hematology started to uh, screen uh, chemical compounds capable of educating the malignant cells. And the readout we used at that time was not the cell death, but differentiation and maturation of malignant cells, such as leukemia cells, under the effect of the What we call differentiation inducers. Uh, actually, we were very fortunate, like Professor Wang said often, that we identified one isomer of the retinoic acid, the all trans retinoic acid, to be very effective in inducing the differentiation of uh, some leukemia cell lines, such as SGL60, but also the fresh cells from. Some of uh, leukemia patients, in particular, patients suffering from the acute polymyositic leukemia. And then the first patient was treated in, if my memory is good, 
1985. Actually, she was a dying girl at the end stage of the disease. And Professor Wang and the wife of Professor Wang, Professor Xie, decided to give her a lease of life. I have to say that at that time, there was no SFDA in China. But that doesn't mean that the drug was not approved. The drug was approved by the municipal government of Shanghai for the treatment of some skin diseases. Yeah. In China, there's a very famous advertisement for some of the cosmetics saying that uh, by using this kind of uh, you know, skin uh, medicines, then the girls of 20 years can become girls of 18. Uh, actually, it was the all trans retinol acid. And uh, in Shanghai, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical industry was unable to produce 13 cysts. So this is another uh, uh, lucky thing. And as you'll see here, after several weeks of uh, in vivo, treatment using retinoic acid. In the bone marrow of the patients, there was an appearance of large number of differentiated cells. You can argue, yeah, how can we be sure that these cells are derived from the leukemic clone instead of the residue uh, normal hematopoietic stem cells? But if you look carefully, then when Professor Wang and the colleagues in the Shanghai Institute of Hematology looked very carefully the differentiated cells. We were able to see some of the biomarkers of the leukemia in the differentiated cells, such as the os rods. And I have to say that this girl is still alive, in very good shape. So she's now about uh, 30 years old, I think. And Professor Wang even helped her to find a job, I think. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the complete remission uh, by using HR alone was uh, quite high. Uh, it could reach uh, 80, even 90 or 95 percent. And then uh, when the paper was published, uh, the results were also confirmed uh, afterwards by many other groups, particularly by Professor Laurent de Gus in uh, San Louis Hospital, where uh, Professor Hugh de Tay is working now, and also by Professor, uh, by Dr. Uh, Raymond Warrell in uh, uh, Memorial, Memorial St. Catherine, and then by Professor Rizzo Ono in Nagoya University. And then it was found that uh, Atra, or transretinoic acid, was not enough to eradicate the disease. Therefore, chemotherapy uh, has been incorporated into uh, the consolidation therapy. And uh, during the remission induction, if patients uh, develop hyperleukocytosis, then chemotherapy was also used. And uh, in the best center, I think, in uh, a report from Italy, actually, the five-year disease-free survival of this once most fatal form of AML uh, could be as high as uh, over 70%. And uh, this is a typical example of uh, translational research, but not from the bench to the bedside, but from the bed side to the bench. Uh, actually, you all know that uh, uh, Hugh, that they uh, was the first to clone uh, the translocation 1517, uh, uh, discovering the fusion uh, between retinal cancer receptor IFI and the, and the PML, and with Samuel Waxman and uh, Arthur Zeland, who uh, unfortunately uh, can't come this time, uh, we cloned the first variant chromosome translocation, uh, 1117. Uh, I think uh, Sai Juan Chen played a major role because she was the first uh, to discover that variant translocation. And uh, when she sent the paper, the report of 1117 to one Chinese journal, the paper was rejected because people said, this is not an APL. 
uh, for a case uh, to be APL, there must be a 1517 translocation. Uh, the important thing is that actually uh, this uh, uh, fusion gene, uh, the uh, protein included by this uh, uh, gene, as well as the uh, other fusions, uh, actually play an essential role in the leukemogenesis of APL, as evidenced by the uh, transgenic uh, uh, model. Uh, of course, uh, actually the retinoic uh, signaling pathway uh, is kind of uh, abrogated by this uh, uh, fusion protein, but also the PMM nuclear body, uh, which is important uh, in the regulation of the apoptosis and nowadays also uh, uh, senescence, I think. And then uh, reports also came to, s to say that in addition to the uh, PMRRA 1517 translocation or other XRRA, uh, uh, there could be a second hit, uh, such as uh, uh, 3 uh, uh, mutation. So you have here uh, two uh, eventually uh, important uh, genetic events, an abnormal uh, nuclear receptor or transcription factor, uh, and also a uh, molecule involved in uh, uh, cytosolic signaling. And I borrow this, uh, uh, this uh, slide from uh, Jonathan Lickett in a very long uh, uh, review article. Actually, Ari is the co-author of this uh, <laughs> historical review. Uh, he's also in the audience, I hope. Uh, actually, uh, through the hard work of many uh, teams, we start to learn more about the molecular mechanism underlying uh, this uh, differentiation therapy. But I have to say, after all, uh, this is a targeting therapy because uh, all transferatinoic acid can target the PMRR and uh, uh, release the sequestration of a number of important proteins uh, uh, involved in the hematopoietic uh, cell differentiation, uh, proliferation and apoptosis, and release of a co-receptor complex uh, from uh, the receptor, and then uh, the uh, restoration, at least in part, of the retinoid signaling. And uh, in the meantime, actually, the nuclear bodies uh, also uh, can be reorganized uh, to favor the differentiation and apoptosis of the, uh, uh, of the APL cells. In addition, uh, some other pathways uh, blocked by the PMRR uh, can also be uh, released as uh, uh, actually uh, provide the evidence uh, is provided by a work of uh, Ji Zhang uh, publishing cancer cell. Uh, actually, in a, in a review article, uh, together with uh, Hugh, we raised the question, uh, why uh, many genes regulated in APL, HR model, are not typical uh, retinoid acid targets, and why uh, RARA knockout mice show little change in myeloid differentiation. And uh, now we know that actually pupil one pathway is also uh, repressed uh, due to PMRR, and the effect of HR can also release this uh, transcriptional uh, repression uh, of the uh, pure point one target genes. Uh, however, uh, using of HR alone uh, uh, in the great majority of the patients uh, can generate durable uh, uh, effects uh, uh, because of the induction of the enzymatic machinery uh, for catabolism of uh, the, uh, the, the medicine by the drug itself. Uh, actually, Wilson Miller also showed that uh, in some of the patients, actually, there could be a uh, selective effects of uh, mutations in the ligand bonding domain of RARA uh, in PMR RARA. Uh, therefore, uh, at that time, that means about uh, uh, 20 years ago, although we got very uh, good results of uh, maybe uh, 50 to 60 percent of the five-year disease-free survival of the patients, uh, still the other half of the patients relapse and once relapse occur, uh, usually they are uh, resistant to both chemotherapy and retinoic acid. So uh, very fortunately, in a meeting held, I remember in 1994, uh, uh, 
in uh, China. Sai Juan met with a group of uh, doctors from Harbin Medical University, and uh, this group of people were interested in uh, the effects of uh, arsenic compound against human cancers, and they told Sai Juan that actually uh, uh, the compound, uh, the solution uh, containing both arsenic trioxide and uh, uh, mercury uh, chloride and a little bit of uh, venom uh, uh, actually uh, uh, could uh, have uh, effects against the APL. And uh, uh, when we checked the uh, medical, medical literature uh, from both uh, uh, Chinese history and, uh, and the European records, actually arsenic uh, had uh, uh, both uh, good and, and bad reputations. Bad reputation because it was considered as a poison, good reputation uh, since it was also used as medicine. Uh, therefore, in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Tim Dong Zhang from Harbin, actually Professor Wang and uh, actually three of us decided that uh, we need to uh, trial uh, uh, this drug uh, among the patients relapsed after uh, retinoic acid and uh, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, of course, the first thing we did was not clinical trial, but uh, looking at the uh, possible cellular and molecular mechanisms. Uh, indeed, uh, under the effect of the arsenic trioxide, the APL cells uh, could uh, undergo both uh, differentiation, uh, which is a partial differentiation, or apoptosis uh, in a dose and a time dependent way. And just like uh, 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 Hugh uh, showed this, this morning in Shanghai, uh, actually uh, arsenic uh, can exert a quite strong effect against uh, PMA RARA, but not the uh, white type uh, uh, RARA, at least within the time of 48 hours. And uh, if you look at the fluorescent staining of the PML uh, uh, over uh, different time course uh, in APL cells, you will see very interesting phenomena. Therefore, we decided to have a clinical study in Shanghai, uh, which is quite a controlled study, because we we're, were sure that these uh, were APL patients and the relapsed ones. And surprising, uh, surprising thing was that actually out of 15 patients relapsed, 14 achieved complete remission again, suggesting that uh, uh, arsenic trioxide, arsenic compound, and all transferred acid uh, shouldn't have cross uh, uh, resistance, and they must work through different mechanisms. However, arsenic effects is relatively specific against APL. This suggests that the molecular mechanism underlying the arsenic therapy for APL should be somehow related to the pathogenesis of the disease. Therefore, we make the hypothesis that PMRARA itself could be the direct target of arsenic. As I showed you earlier in the uh, Western blot, actually, the white type RARA remained intact after 48 hours of treatment using arsenic, suggesting that if something happening, that must happen uh, in the PML side. Uh, so, to make a long story short, uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Hugh, actually, our team uh, was able to show that uh, indeed arsenic uh, can directly bound uh, to PML as well as PML RARA uh, in cells, uh, of course, also in vitro. And, uh, 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 yeah, by using uh, both biochemistry and the biophysics methodology, we showed that. Uh, bonding of the uh, uh, arsenic uh, with PMLRARA or PML uh, eventually can cause a change in configuration of uh, the proteins. And uh, uh, I have no time to enter into the details, uh, but uh, uh, interestingly, uh, the ring finger and the B box uh, also containing a ring finger in the RBCC domain of the PML. Uh, seems to be the target of arsenic because arsenic can replace zinc to bound to those uh, zinc fingers. And this bonding can
can enhance the interaction between PML and PMRRA with UBC9, which is an, uh, actually E2 conjugate uh, for simulation. And uh, as mentioned uh, by Hugh this morning, actually uh, this simulation of PML and the PMRRA uh, can actually recruit uh, uh, enzymatic machinery for degradation of the proteins, the uh, ubiquitination system. Uh, as a result, uh, uh, there's a degradation of the PML and the PMRRA. Now we have two uh, uh, agents against the same protein, but uh, through different mechanisms and acting on uh, different portions of the same uncle protein uh, because uh, retinoic acid actually uh, bound to this uh, uh, ligand bonding domain of the C terminal of the PMRRA, whereas arsenic compound, arsenic can directly bound to the ring and the B box uh, of the uh, N terminal of the same protein. So the question was raised by a group of scientists. At the time, I think uh, we got a discussion among Professor Wang, Samuel Waxman, Laurent de Goose, and uh, Louisa Ono, and uh, Professor Sen Zhixiang, and some other uh, uh, hematologists. Uh, why should we wait the patients mm, to develop relapse? Uh, should we uh, put the two agents together? Of course, uh, some people uh, uh, just give us a warning that uh, uh, yeah, maybe the therapeutic effects could be enhanced, but uh, uh, be careful about the uh, additive uh, side effects. Therefore, we did uh, uh, some work uh, to show that actually uh, the therapeutic-related uh, pathways can be enhanced by uh, the combined use of HR together with the arsenic trioxide. For example, this AQP9, which is an aqua channel for arsenic can be induced, actually, by uh, uh, retinoic acid, whereas uh, most of the uh, uh, redox pathways are not that uh, uh, further enhanced by the combined effects of the two drugs. And by the way, uh, as byproduct, uh, we generate or we discovered a series of genes named as uh, 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 RIG, uh, standing for retinoid-induced genes. Uh, it happened that uh, one of them, RIG-I, become so uh, famous nowadays in the innate uh, immunity. And uh, uh, more importantly, uh, in collaboration with Hugh and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Samuel Waxman, we were able to show that when you put the two uh, drugs together, uh, really you can eliminate the disease uh, in the animal model, or at least uh, significantly uh, prolong the lifespan uh, in some other models. Therefore, uh, we decided to start a new trial, uh, I think in the year 2000. And uh, OK, this is the results. You can see uh, the uh, computer remission rate, 94%, and the five-year disease-free, event-free survival, uh, 89, and five-year relapse-free survival, uh, almost 95%. Overall survival, uh, 97%. Uh, Actually, as compared to the historic control, uh, which you can see here, this is a protocol using HR together with chemotherapy. And rela when relapse occurred, uh, we add uh, arsenic trioxide. So it's HR to uh, add, uh, arsenic, whereas this is the combination therapy. Yeah, actually, the, the same thing, but for event-free survival. And we were very sensitive to the side effects of the uh, therapy because we would like to uh, truly cure the patients instead of uh, poisoning them. And uh, 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 actually, uh, three years ago, we invited a number of patients, uh, long-term survivors, yeah, off treatment uh, with arsenic for more than two years. And uh, also, the results were compared to a group of uh, uh, age, and the sex matched controls. And uh, actually, this examination shows that uh, they were all in, in, in good shape. Uh, therefore, uh, I think the 
uh, H and ATO combination therapy should be a, a safe therapy for the patients. And uh, the results have been uh, more recently confirmed by several groups, including a recent paper in, in blood by an uh, Australian group. And uh, uh, there was an interesting uh, insight uh, commentary uh, of uh, uh, blood, how to cure APL, uh, A plus A yield uh, another A. Uh, I think we can uh, uh, truly learn something uh, from this uh, story as a result of international cooperation. Uh, I have to say that translational research is critical for understanding leukemogenesis and the development of therapeutic strategy. But uh, sometimes, uh, instead of from bench side to the uh, bench to the bedside, uh, actually we uh, can go to the other uh, direction as well. And agents perturbing molecules critical for leukemia pathogenesis represent new leads on life for patients. And particularly, targeted therapy may bring cure when distinct agents targeting the same uncle protein on the same pathway via different mechanisms could yield best results owing to synergistic effect. Of course, in China, we said we have three medicines, traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, Western medicine, and also the convergence of the two medicines. Uh, some questions uh, should be further addressed. How to treat cases with severe bleeding at the uh, diagnosis? Because we still have a few patients who unfortunately died of early uh, 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 actually uh, uh, bleeding syndrome. Uh, and why are a few patients still get relapse? And moreover, could chemotherapy be avoided in the combination therapy? Uh, maybe uh, during this conference, some uh, uh, colleagues can give, we, give us uh, some uh, uh, answers to those questions. And another issue is that can the APR legion be extended to other human leukemia? Uh, about uh, 10 years ago, actually, uh, together with Sai Zhuang, we launched two uh, projects in China Institute of Hematology. One is the Leukemia Genome Anatomy Project, uh, which is kind of uh, genomic-related uh, project, and the other is the Leukemia Integrative Chemical Genomics. We would like to uh, 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 screen more uh, compounds. And I borrow this uh, slide from uh, Professor uh, Mark Bishop. Uh, actually, he given a talk in Shanghai in, in July, uh, in June uh, this year, uh, uh, mentioning uh, some of the outcomes of the targeting therapy. Uh, he said, actually, uh, only the uh, uh, H uh, uh, arsenic compound combination can yield a cure, whereas in some other models, we may have extended uh, survival, we may have uh, chronic diseases, we may have brief remission, but there's no cure. Uh, therefore, I think the concept of synergistic targeting should be very important. Uh, therefore, uh, we think about uh, uh, how to eventually eliminate the disease uh, from CML patients. We all know that uh, Grivec and uh, Dazadinib uh, targeting therapy against the tyrosine kinase, BCR-ABO, uh, works very well. But after a long time uh, exposure, uh, then uh, there could be a resistance. And uh, therefore, uh, we uh, thought that uh, this uh, ancient remedy, uh, arsenic compound, could be uh, tried once again. But this time, in Shanghai Institute of Hematology, uh, instead of using uh, arsenic trioxide, we prefer to use a different compound, the arsenic sulfur, because it can be given uh, orally and uh, uh, seems to be uh, having less side effects. And interesting thing is, if we look at the BCI-able uh, uncle protein, then uh, under the effect of the imatinib Grivac, of course the tyrosine kinase activity uh, could be uh, significantly uh, inhibit, but the protein is still there. Whereas when arsenic sulfide was uh, uh, used, you will see kind of a reduction of the uh, uh, protein level. And when the two things were given together, then further uh, reduction of the protein level. Uh, and uh, uh, we also uh, tried the combination 
of the two compounds, arsenic sulfide and Gleevec, in a mouse uh, bearing BCIBO model, thanks to uh, the support of uh, Ray Bauer, uh, Ray Bauer. Uh, actually, uh, there uh, is a kind of synergistic effect when uh, low dose Gleevec uh, was combined with uh, arsenic sulfide. And then we were uh, uh, interested in the possible molecular mechanism. And uh, uh, we found that actually uh, BCIBO uh, is the substrate of the ubiquitin nation E3 ligase CCBO. And very interestingly, in the absence of the arsenic, CCBO can uh, 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 have uh, self ubiquitination. As a result, the turnover is quite uh, quick uh, of this protein and the BCI able remain there. And upon bonding of the arsenic on this uh, cysteine at uh, this position, then the self uh, ubiquitination of the CC bow uh, is inhibited. Uh, but uh, there's no interference against the enzymatic effect of CC bow uh, towards the substrate. As a result, uh, there's an enhanced degradation of BCR able. And uh, therefore, uh, we would like to try this. And uh, interestingly, uh, uh, Dr. Pierre Paolo uh, uh, Pandolfi's lab showed some very interesting results four years ago that a PML is required for the quiescent maintenance of the hematopoietic stem cells and the uh, leukemia and the eating cells in CML. And arsenic is able to target PML and er eradicate quiescent. Uh, actually leukemia initiating cells in this uh, leukemia setting. Uh, therefore, I, we think that uh, maybe it's the time uh, to launch a new trial. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I was told by Sai Juan that this morning, the medicines and the placebo arrived to the lab. So uh, we are organizing a, a, a large-scale clinical trial in collaboration with some other centers uh, in China uh, to compare the uh, Gleevec alone and Gleevec together with arsenic uh, sulfide. Uh, hopefully, uh, this uh, can generate some uh, synergistic effect once again. And uh, uh, just to let you know that uh, more recently, we found that uh, uh, arsenic could be effective against lung cancer as well. Yeah. And interesting thing uh, is that uh, uh, you know, uh, at the cellular uh, levels, cell lines resistant to uh, definitive still respond uh, even in a more significant way to the effect of the arsenic uh, uh, trial side. This is the uh, in vivo test. And uh, uh, very interestingly, Jianghua Mao in the lab found that actually arsenic can directly bind to the protein P62, which is a key player in the regulation of the autophage. It's also a kind of vehicle which can uh, carry the cargo to the uh, autophagosome. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, EGF receptor is one of the cargo. Uh, as a result, we see also an enhanced degradation of the EGF receptor, including the mutant EGF receptor in this setting. And now we have at least four proteins uh, which can be bound by arsenic. Uh, PML, PML RARA, and uh, CCBO, and P62, and another protein, SIAH1. And interestingly, all these proteins bear the ring finger structure. And this is the motif which is responsible for the bonding of uh, arsenic. Uh, finally, I would like to just show you that uh, even uh, some natural products based on herbal medicines in the traditional Chinese medicine uh, can play a role in the therapy of uh, leukemia. Uh, here, uh, uh, actually, uh, we are interested in the AML, uh, AML M2 with a trans H1 translocation. Uh, sometimes it's, this disease is considered as a uh, subtype of leukemia with relatively good uh, outcome, but uh, in East Asia, I hope that uh, Professor Ono will agree with me that uh, in uh, Japan as in China, our results uh, are not as good as in some of the uh, Western populations. 
because the long-term survival rate is not very high. And even a, a recent uh, uh, paper, uh, actually, I think by uh, Professor uh, Martin Thoman and a colleague, showed that uh, uh, actually uh, worldwide the overall uh, outcome of this disease was not that uh, great. So we have uh, eventual uh, molecular targets uh, in this disease. Uh, one is the ML ETO as a result of age transfer. Transfer translocation, uh, we know quite well uh, the role that this fusion protein played. And uh, uh, very interestingly, uh, we found together with Guo Chang Chen uh, that uh, this protein could be subjected to the cleavage effects of the caspase 3. And particularly at two positions, uh, D188 and D368. Uh, and another target is the uh, C-kit. Uh, in China, actually, we screened a large number of patients, and the mutation rate is quite high. Uh, almost half of the patients have this. And in collaboration with uh, Ray Bao Ren we were, uh, and uh, Yue Ying Wang, we were able to show that uh, in animal model, actually, the uh, ML1 E2 alone, uh, uh, was the full length, at least, uh, was not able to induce a leukemia phenotype, but uh, together with the uh, CKIT mutation, then we can induce a, a phenotype similar to the uh, uh, M2 leukemia in human beings. And one compound uh, based on the uh, herbal medicine from China, orindonin, uh, has very interesting uh, effects against the M1 eater. Uh, you see, after uh, one or two days of treatment of the cells, uh, you will see reduction of the protein level of the M1 eater. And in the same time, you see uh, a protein uh, responding to the uh, staining of the antibody here. And uh, actually, we're able to show that this is in the truncated M1 eater. Uh, as a matter of fact, this truncated uh, M1 eater represents almost uh, the total uh, uh, coding region of the white type uh, eater. And interestingly, this delta uh, M1 eater uh, uh, functions as kind of a tumor suppressor against the parental uh, protein M1 eater in both uh, actually in vitro and in vivo uh, studies. And we got also some biochemistry uh, evidence to say that uh, uh, this uh, uh, truncated uh, M1 eater interfere with the tetramer formation of the oncoprotein M1 eater. And, uh, uh, why uh, uh, this delta AE? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, there's an early induction of the generation of the uh, reactive oxygen species uh, uh, within uh, half an hour treatment of the cells exposed to orindonin. And when you block uh, the effect of the orindonin by using uh, the uh, uh, ROS, uh, inhibitor NAC, then you can block the generation of the uh, delta AE, and also you can block the uh, caspase 3 uh, cleavage. And then, to make a long story short, we found that uh, uh, actually uh, orindonin can uh, interfere with the redox system enzymes, and uh, actually orindonin bounds to the cysteine residues of, the, of these enzymes. But why uh, uh, this uh, relatively selective effect to uh, cleave the M01 eater uh, just uh, under the effect of orindonin, uh, whereas the same effect uh, cannot be seen when some other inducers of uh, CASP3 are present, such as the chemotherapy uh, agents. And we raised hypothesis that maybe uh, orindonin can directly bound to the M1 ether uh, and do, to do something there. And it turned out it was the case, actually. So as a result, uh, the uh, CASP3 cleavage of the M1 ether was directed only to the D188 position instead of the uh, 368 position, and, uh, uh, which stabilizes the delta AE. And we also made some uh, uh, actually structural 
simulation of this effect. And indeed, it is possible that upon bounding of the orange learning to the position C347, uh, there could be a spatial hindrance for interaction between D368 uh, and the case case 3. Uh, so some working hypothesis was raised, and more importantly, uh, there uh, are uh, in vivo synergistic effects when orange was used together with some differentiation agents such as ITRA and the GCSF to significantly prolong the lifespan of the mouse model with uh, M1 eater. And more recently, uh, Sai Juan organized a kind of a phase zero study which revealed that uh, supported uh, very strongly by Professor Wang. Professor Wang checked uh, all these patients that among five relapsed uh, MR patients with a 21 translocation receiving orange therapy, two obtained partial remission. And more interestingly, three cases previously showing resistance to chemotherapy, this time got complete remission with induced sensitivity to RSC and the homo parentoni. Actually, the relapse were uh, occurred in two patients when they received, uh, they were receiving these two uh, agents. So uh, could orindone exert effects on quiescent leukemia initiating cells in patients? Uh, because we already uh, got evidence in uh, mouse model. So we believe that uh, in the uh, setting of AML uh, M2 uh, with the uh, A21 translocation, we may uh, propose a different kind of synergistic targeting therapy, uh, this time because multiple pathways are involved in the leukemogenesis, then we need to target uh, uh, different uh, pathways by using different agents. Um, so, uh, like Sai Juan said this morning, uh, in, in, in Shanghai, now at least the three classes of uh, genes or proteins uh, uh, should be involved in the leukemogenesis in AML. Uh, class 1 mutations involving uh, signaling factors and class 2 mutations affecting mostly the transcription factors. And now we need to deal with this new class uh, of genes or proteins as epigenetic regulator, particularly when DNM23A mutation uh, as well as IDH1 and IDH2 mutations were uh, discovered uh, more recently among the AML patients, and uh, we may develop, uh, therefore, uh, uh, appropriate uh, targeting therapy. And I think the combined use of those things uh, should be able to uh, generate better results uh, against uh, leukemia. So finally, I would like to say that uh, uh, the uh, translational research is so important uh, not only for the glory of the scientists, of the hematologists, and oncologists, but uh, much more importantly for the health of our patients. Uh, actually, China now is undergoing a major healthcare reform, and I already reported to you that uh, uh, in addition to the universal coverage of the uh, 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 medical care, actually we also initiated some uh, uh, spatial mechanisms against the catastrophic diseases. We started this with two diseases, I mean the children, so uh, childhood ALL, APL, and uh, congenital heart disease. Uh, with the initial success, last year we extended to uh, uh, six other major diseases, including end-stage renal disease. So now uh, in China, in Suzhou area, every farmer suffering from leukemia can get a very high reimbursement rate, over 90% reimbursement rate against uh, hemodialysis. And the breast cancer and uh, cervical cancer patients can get the same benefits, and also severe psychiatric diseases uh, are highly covered, uh, uh, as well as the HIV AIDS opportunistic infection and uh, TB patients uh, who uh, are unfortunately multiple drug resistance. And this year, in the annual report of Premier Wen Jiabao, 12 more disease categories will be uh, included. Actually, now we are pushing very hard. So when I was the VP of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, I always uh, uh, told my <laughs> colleagues, we need to aim, aim high uh, in science, 
But now, uh, as a public servant, I have also to say that uh, we, need, we need to uh, serve all. So uh, the story of APL can also uh, uh, consider as a typical, uh, actually, translational research from T1 through T4, because now in China, the drugs are listed on the essential drug catalog, so patients can get a very high reimbursement rate. Uh, that means, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, most of the patients can uh, benefit from the most advanced uh, research. Uh, I hope that uh, international cooperation uh, at the platform of this uh, wonderful meeting of the International Conference on Cancer Differentiation Therapy in collaboration with uh, Coast Spring Harbor Asia can promote uh, each level of the uh, translational research at the International Conference. Finally, I would like to thank all collaborators in Shanghai Institute of Hematology, uh, people involved in the clinical study, molecular leukemogenesis study, transcriptome protein uh, analysis, and even policy issues. Dr. Zhi Ruo Zhang was the first to propose that uh, coverage of the uremia should be possible in China. And my thanks also go to Professor Ting Dong Zhang from the first hospital affiliated to Haibing Medical University, and Liu uh, Dei, Rwanda Goose, and many other colleagues from the Hôpital Saint Louis, Paris, and Professor Samuel Waxman and Arthur Dillon from Monsanto Medical Center, New York, and the Samuel Waxman Cancer Research Foundation. I wish our 13th International Conference on Differencing Therapy a complete success, and thank you very much for your attention.